Hey traders, Akil here, fresh off the road, and boy, do I have an exciting Forex market preview video for you this week. Hey guys, welcome back to another Forex Market Preview video and thank you for joining me once again. If you guys are new, my name is Akil Stokes. I am a Forex trader as well as the head trading coach over at TradeEmpowered.com. And this, the Forex Market Preview, well, this is a weekly video that we've been doing here for years and years and years in order to give you some free content and, and really allow you to see what we're looking at on a weekly basis. and hopefully provide you some tips that will help you push further along in your trading journey. Uh, do me a favor, if you like what you see here, hit that like button. Feel free to leave a comment as well. I love reading the nice things you guys have to say. And also, if you're brand new, uh, make sure you subscribe to this video. That way you don't miss it each and every week. And also, make sure you head over to our website, tradeempower.com, and take advantage of both the free trading education as well as our paid educational service if you're interested in training courses or a syndicate program or any type of software it's all over at tradeempower.com just feel free to browse around the site and uh, take advantage of it we're going to start off today by looking at gold so let's head over to the gold chart here let's get down to what we're looking at here the four hour Oh, I'm on silver. Excuse me about that. Let's get over to gold. Here we go. So gold is a pair that I took a look at earlier in the week, and we were looking at a potential head and shoulders formation. You can see the, the notes still left on my chart. We had an initial move, um, swing high to swing low, creating our left shoulder. We retraced back into our neckline. We uh, extended once again lower, creating our head, bounced back up to retest the neckline, and then retraced off of that level, creating our right shoulder. And what we were looking for is a break and close above our neckline here, a retrace back down into structure, right? That area between our neckline and our right shoulder, and then an extension up to this yellow box. This was the next level that I thought we can see hit here on gold. Now, right before this video started, I actually got a comment over here on TradingView saying, hey, Akil, um, based on how I trade head and shoulders patterns, I would expect to see a move all the way up to these previous structure highs. And traditionally, what you would expect with the head and shoulders pattern, same thing with like flag formations and pennant formations, what they say is you're exposed to expect, um, say that five times fast, it, 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 it's supposed to expect, right? Um, you're supposed to expect an equal measured move. So the move from the head to the neckline here before creating our right shoulder, if we were to clone that, you should expect an equal measured move higher, which would put us right at this level of structure. And I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Um, however, when I look to trade, I look for the first opportunities to get out of the market, meaning I'm not a trader that um, is looking to catch the entire big move. I don't want to catch the absolute bottom to the absolute top. Most of the time when you do that, you're going to end up getting burnt. Now, when you do hit it, you can make some extreme and some extraordinary profits, and, and that can make up for the times that it doesn't happen. Um, but with my personal style, I would rather just be in and out of the market quickly, looking for the first potential area of danger. Um, for me, I, I like to say think like the other traders, so I look for the first area in this case where I think sellers would want to get involved, and I look to take profits off at, this, at that level. And that's why I identified this lower level of structure as well. Um, but there's nothing wrong with uh, looking for this higher level of structure too. And you can see that price action did almost exactly what we, we thought it would do. We got the break and close above, we retest it, and we're making our way up to this level. And what I would be looking for this week is one of two things. If you are a counter trend trader, so if you're a trader looking to get short, I would wait until price action comes up into this level, and I would look for some type of reversal reason to look for a relief at this, uh, at this area of structure, meaning for the buying pressure to kind of run out of steam and look for some sellers or some selling pressure, I should say, 
uh, to take control and look for a little bit of a push down. Now remember, this would be a counter trend trading opportunity, meaning you don't expect the market to come all the way down here and, and do a complete reverse in trend. You're just looking for uh, a little bite of the cookie, right? You're looking for to grab a little crumb, like I mentioned earlier, get in and get out. Um, that's what you can look for if you're a counter trend trader here. If you're a trend continuation trader, meaning you're someone that's looking to buy, well, we do still have some room to the upside here. So if we were to get another retracement, maybe looking at a lower time frame, back into structure once again, this, uh, this can also be another opportunity to get involved in the move higher. So looking to buy the dip, right? BTFD, buy the freaking dip, right? Now, this brings up a really good point. We had a great discussion in my live trading room this past week on kind of how newer traders, I like to call them underexperienced traders, um, get caught up in these moves. And, it, and, and it's, not a, it, it's a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing because you don't know what you don't know. And that, that's just part of trading. Most of what we learn in trading comes from experience. Um, it helps to have a mentor, to have a coach, to have an educator that can help walk you through their experiences. That way you don't trip and fall through uh, as many potholes. But at the end of the day, most of your knowledge is gonna come from making mistakes and learning from those mistakes. And this is a great mistake that I used to make. Right? Uh, make. So we just talked about buying the dip and let's just um, use this as an example here. Let me just roll our chart over, give myself some real estate. So let's say the market is trending like this, right? We see the move right here and the next move is, is an extension. Well, something I used to do is I used to try and buy right at what would end up being the very highs of this extension. And you know, the market's rallying up and you're saying, oh, the bulls are in control, the, uh, the buyers are in control. CNBC and Bloomberg are telling you there's so much strength in gold versus the dollar. You have to buy, you have to buy, you have to buy. So what would I do? I would buy. And then as soon as I bought, I swear, it was like my broker was watching me or the market was watching me. As soon as I bought, what do you think would happen, guys? Many of you guys are shaking your head like, I know, I've been here too. I know exactly what you're about to say. What do you think would happen? As soon as I bought, the market would start reversing, right? The market would start reversing. And then eventually I would get scared, right? I would, I would take enough pain in, in my, my buying position going against me that I would exit the trade right down here. And of course, what happens as soon as you exit the trade? Boom, the next extension happens. The market moves up in the same direction that you expected it to. And you're sitting there like, no, I called it, I called it, I called it. But I lost money, right? <laughs> and this usually, you know, there's two types of scenarios with this. Usually there's one type of trader that will that will look at this and be like, oh man, I had the prediction right, but I just missed out. Stupid, stupid, stupid. And then there are kind of the other trader that just is so far off from reality that's sitting back and saying, well, you know, I was right. So good job. It's like, yeah, you're right, but you lost money. Remember in trading, timing is key. We, we have to predict the what, meaning the what would happen, but we also have to predict the when and the where, and that's how we get into trading opportunities. So it's all great if you can call or predict that the market's gonna head higher, but if you can't get involved in that move at the right place, it, it's not gonna be really worth it. So it's the what and the where, the what, the where, and the when that matter in trading. And again, a lot of rookie traders get caught up in this, and this is what the smart traders want to happen, right? The smart traders are buying at the dips, right? They're, they're buy low, sell high. We've all heard it before. They're buying at the dips. As soon as the market extends, this is where they're looking to take profit at. So if you're buying and you need to take profit, what type of orders do you have at that level? You have sell orders, right? So a bunch of sell orders are being flushed into the market just as these new buyers, right? The ones that were late are getting involved. You see the sell off, the traders that got in late, they're panicking, they, they, they've, they've uh, experienced a lot of pain from their buy order going south. And what do they have to do to uh, exit the trade? Well, they have to sell, right? A sell stop to exit the trade. And well, for the buyers that are interested, once again, at that previous cheaper price, right? Those sell orders are exactly what they need to get their buy orders filled and push the market back up once again. And the game continues, 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 and consistently eats newer traders alive. And that used to be me. So be careful about buying right now at market or on the open at market. 
give the chance, uh, give the market a chance to breathe, give the market a chance to retrace, and then look for that buying opportunity. And I, I tell you what, if it doesn't happen, go to a different pair. There will be another opportunity somewhere, but there's no need to kind of recklessly throw your money away. So that's pound dollar, uh, excuse me, that's gold dollar. Let's go to pound dollar next. This was actually a trade that just hit target ones for me this Friday. Um, I was so happy it hit before the weekend because we've been talking all week about gaps and whatnot. And, and I don't like holding trades over the weekend. Um, I do. I'm a swing trader. So longer term positions, I have to. But I would prefer not to just in case some any funny business happens. So I was happy enough to hit target ones before the weekend, which I was proud of for about 85 pips. But I'll tell you what we were looking here, looking for here on the pound dollar and what we're looking for next. Um, Coming into the week, we're looking at a lot of pairs here, um, predicting a lot of dollar weakness, looking for a lot of pairs for trend continuation opportunities. We knew that um, we had a lot of action in last week's market. We had the FOMC uh, statement coming this week as well. Um, and a lot of price on, on these pairs have hit or had broken uh, some pretty powerful levels of support or resistance. So we were kind of in a wait and see mode here in the syndicate where we're saying, hey, hey traders, keep an eye on these pairs wait for the retracement that I just talked about and look for the buying opportunities. And, and that's what pound dollar gave us. And pound dollar put in a nice retracement, right? We topped off right here, right? We put in a nice retracement lower, put in a beautiful symmetrical double bottom right at previous structure. It doesn't look like it much here on the hourly, but this is actually an ascending triangle that we saw a breakout from earlier. So we're, we were eyeballing this level as, um, a chance for the market or for the buyers to get more interested at this market. And like I said, we had a beautiful double bottom there. You can see the RSI went oversold. We also had some uh, bullish diversions on the retest and I bought it up right here and we rode it all the way to the tops. Now I took off half my position here at the tops. Um, again, I want to bank profit. That's the fir first and foremost. I want to put some money in my, uh, my account. Um, so I banked half a position here and I told our traders we can look for a move up to our previous structure highs here. Now, that's a long ways away, right? We're sitting right now at about, um, what are we, 131? What did we retrace down to close at? About 131.30s, right? Our previous structure highs up here are about 134.50. So there's a good amount of room between where we're at and where we could potentially get to. And this is where active trade management comes in handy. So after getting target ones achieved, not only can we roll stops to break even and make sure we're not gonna give back any of that profit, but as the market works its way towards that level, if it works its way towards that level, I can continue to lock in profit on the way. So even if we don't get to that, that uh, the, the, the ultimate destination, I'm still gonna be a very profitable trade. And that's something that is very important to me. Now, there are different opportunities that present themselves, right? One is going to be another break and close. I just showed you guys where I'm predicting price action to go to, right? If we get a break and close above this level, then, right, you can look for the retest of previous structure and a chance to buy it up. If price action comes down here, you can look for another buying opportunity down at this level as well, our previous level of consolidation and if for some reason price action spikes past both of these levels and retraces all the way down, we have a, a very strong dollar week for some reason, we can look for a potential advanced pattern formation. And this is gonna be a Gartley formation, right? Let me just bring my Fibonacci extension tool on and we're gonna be looking for a move that looks like this. Swing low right here, 130 uh, even basically is gonna be our X to A, our swing low to swing high. Our retracement down here is gonna be our A to B. We're gonna follow it up with a B to C, retesting previous structure highs. And we'd be looking for a D completion right down here at 130.21. Actually, this may be a bat formation now that I look at it. I tried to eyeball it, but let me actually bring some fibs on here. Nope, Gartley formation, yep, dead on. So potential Gartley formation right at a retest of these previous structure lows, which would offer us a buying opportunity. So there's still more. Now, again, I'm already involved in this trade, so I'm just looking for my trade to uh, to pan out or to continue out. But actually, I forgot. In our syndicate service, guys, we only take one in and one out. So I, tr I treat my personal trading a little bit differently than what we do in our syndicate program. In our syndicate program, we do one in, one out, meaning that we only take a single target. So it's single profit target level, single stop. And what that allows us to do is trade more opportunities. It, it, 
helps from uh, <laughs> it helps our traders uh, from getting confused as well when we're talking about half position out here, second half here, roll stops, and blah 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 blah. So we try to keep it as simple as possible since we have many newer traders entering that program looking to learn to trade or looking to get some experience trading, and we don't want to confuse them. So I'm fully out of that position in the syndicate, so I can actually look for. Um, the next move up as well. So this is something that I'll be watching in both the syndicate um, account and in my personal account as far as trailing uh, the current position that's on. Speaking of the syndicate, guys, we had a great month, um, July. All four weeks of July have been profitable. Um, we made about a 6% return on investment, which is good. And, you know, despite the, the rough start to the year, if you guys remember the first six weeks of the year were horrible, we've been in... <sighs> an extremely good, uh, we've, we've, we've been trading well, let's put it that way. Every time I say something really, really good, I jinx it. So let's just say we've been trading good um, and the equity curve is pointing in the right direction. So very happy about how Jason Greystone and myself have been trading in the syndicate. It hasn't been um, a tremendous amount of opportunities, meaning we're not firing off 100 trades uh, a week. I think usually we, we average about 10. Um, but we've been really efficient with what we've been trading and uh, just good to put in really strong back-to-back -back weeks. I think 150 pips um, last week and this week as well. So very happy about that. And um, you know that, that, that brings up a good point um, just in general about trading. Um, uh, do I want to tell you guys this? Yeah, what the heck. So I was looking at my equity curve this past week, just as it's essentially the end of the month. I know we have a few days left, but I was looking at it, just uh, doing some review to, to make sure I was on track. And um, I just noticed that, you know, how my equity curves have been over the last, you know, three or four years, which have just, they're, they're very steady, consistent, they're boring, they're, they're, they're not going to be the, 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 the great returns that you may hear about from the people that are trading and showing you videos and, 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 and Ferraris and jets and whatnot, but it's slow, steady, boring, yet very profitable. And I took a look at some of my equity curves in the past and they were all over the place. I, I would win more, but then I would lose and give back even more than that. And it was very choppy and, and very inconsistent. And I was in New York this past weekend for a funeral and uh, the pastor said something very interesting. He was talking about, you know, when you're gone, when you're on your, your when you're dead and, and you have your gravestone, there, there are three things on your gravestone, right? There is the first date, which is when you were born. There is the last date, which is when you died. And he said, the most important thing is in the middle, which is the dash, right? The dash between your born date and your death date. And the dash is the most important thing because it represents what did you do during your life? What did you do while you were alive? And it made me think a lot about time wasted. And, you know, when I first got into trading, I was so stubborn. I, I and That's just me as a person. I'm a very stubborn person. I've always been the type of person that thinks that, Hey, I can do it myself. Hard work has gotten me everything in life. So if I just work harder, eventually I will find the answer. I don't need no stinking help. And it worked for me in the stock market. It didn't work as I went to penny stocks. It didn't work as I first got into Forex. And I wasted a lot of time being stubborn and, and, and trying to do it myself. And it wasn't until I got educated. It wasn't until I took a training course where I got on the right track. And even a few years after that, started really finding myself as a trader and, and getting to the point where I am now, where I'm extremely consistent. Again, I'm boring. Right, I'm boring. My equity curve is boring. My numbers are boring, but they're extremely consistent. And that's exactly what I want for my lifestyle. I like consistency because my bills are consistent, right? Uh, <laughs> but it had me thinking, and I typically don't look at the past and have regrets. I don't really believe in them. I think everything happens for a reason. But I, I thought to myself on my, you know, driving home at midnight, and I'm like, what if I wouldn't have wasted those two years trying to do it on myself, right? What if I was where I am now? two years ago, how much closer would I be to my ultimate goals in life? Um, and again, I, I shut that, I, I tried to shut that thought down really quick because it started getting depressing. Uh, depressing. I don't really like regrets, but it was, a, it w it was a, a good conversation that I had with myself. And I want to bring that up because you need to ask yourself that question. For you guys that 
maybe are you've been trading for a while but you're not really taking it seriously i shared with you uh, an email from a client a few videos ago where he talked about admitting that he wasted his first year time is short guys and before you know it time is going to run out um, before you know it it's going to be five years from now and you're going to wonder why am i still in the same place and the question you need to ask yourself is am i doing everything i need to do to put myself in the best possible position to succeed. And for me, there are two choices. If the answer is no, you're not, then you either need to do something to put yourself in that best position or you need to quit. Because I tell you, if you're doing this, if you're trading half-ass, excuse my language, if you're trading half-ass, you're not gonna get to where you wanna go. You're just gonna waste time and money in the market staying stagnant. You're going to be like Mark Douglas and his boomer busters where you're going to you're going to do just okay not to blow your account, but you're never going to do enough to actually start bringing in a consistent return from trading. And if you're doing that, you're just wasting time because 5 years from now, you're in the same exact spot. So, either commit and do something to better yourself at trading or just quit and find something you love. If trading isn't for you, if you don't have a passion for it, if you only like trading because you think you can make a lot of money, you're probably not gonna succeed. You need a deep passion to get you through those rough periods. And if you don't have that, quit. Find something else, there's no shame in it. Find something that you're passionate about and work really, really, really hard on that. And, you know, again, I hate, hate this topic because it feels like I'm lecturing you guys, but, you know, I always think about, you know, I'm 32 right now. I'm going to be 32 this year, right? And I had certain specific goals that I wanted to reach by 30 and I didn't get them. And I think about if I didn't waste those two years trying to do it myself, would I have reached those goals by 30? And obviously that's a question that I can never answer and that just bothers me. So my mindset whenever I wake up is a kill, do as much as you can. Are you doing as much as you can to take yourself to the next level? And if that answer is never no, well, then I, I go somewhere, I try to motivate myself and I get myself on track to make sure I get myself in the driver's seat again. So think about it, guys. Again, either quit or go all in. There's no middle ground here in business. There's no middle ground here in trading. You, you, you go for it or you quit and find something else that you're passionate about. So let's do one more pair here. Let's take a look at the Aussie Canada. Jason Greystone had a great trade on this. We actually went we went head to head this week. Jason Greystone had a long, I had a short. He won. Hats off to you, Stone. The pupil has beaten the teacher. This time. This time. <laughs> Jason Greystone's been been trading fantastic since he's come back from Spain. He was trading fantastic before that, but um, he's been a great asset to the syndicate. He's he's an awesome trader. Um, and also handles a session that I'm not awake for, a session that Charles Miles or Jason Stapleton wasn't awake for either. So you get more opportunities. But here on Aussie Canada, we'll keep this short. We have a potential 2618 opportunity. You can see price action rolled up here, right? We gave ourselves a nice little double top. We then broke and closed below structure here. Um, if we take our Fibonacci retracement tool and drag it from our swing high to our swing low, and we look at that 618 Fibonacci retracement level, that is going to begin, right? That is going to be the start of our potential reversal zone for a 2618 opportunity. And what that is, is a chance to sell it inside this gold box in anticipation of a move, uh, of a move back lower. This also comes in at a very good level. We just highlight, uh, let me just take a look at this right here. We just highlight this level. It's a different color appeal. Pink, Ew, pink and yellow, not good. Let's do that. If we just highlight this level, we even look right in here, and we look across, right? Look at how price action has reacted to this level in the past. Just scrolling left, and look, look at that, even more lefter, right? We go, we can stop right here. Um, but look how price action has reacted at this level in the past. We double bottomed right here. We've broken and closed below after a little retest. You can look at the wicks here. Uh, sellers or we found buying pressure pushed it back up buying pressure pressure tried to make a fight before the sellers took control again we then came back up to that level found resistance came back up found resistance came back up found resistance came back up found a little bit of resistance before breaking and closing above and then we came back down double bottoming once again finding support and then putting in a little bit of consolidation you can just see a fight happen here right it it, it may 
seemed to the, the newer trader that price action just broke right through, but you can see we stall at this level and little clues like that is very important. So whether you're a 2618 trader or a structure trader, this is a very interesting level to look for a potential reversal in this market heading up from about uh, 99.89s. You have that dollar parity level above as well. Um, really down to these lows at about 99.62. Uh, so a good level to look for a potential reversal and maybe a continuation downward. I, again, I would look for profits at a retest of previous structure lows and then secondary profits would be down at our previous lows um, here on Aussie Canada. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, again, if you want to learn the 2618 opportunity, head over to our website, tradeempowered.com. That's one of the things that are that is under our free training. So just hit the learn to trade tab and uh, you'll see the 2618 trading right down here. You can learn how to do that strategy. And if you're new, again, just check out the website. We have lots of free educational videos. We have lots of paid uh, educational services as well. And a lot of those educational services have trial periods. So for our, for example, our live rooms, we offer a free week. I would suggest taking a free week in both the London and the New York session. For our syndicate program, we offer the first 30 days for just $1. So um, you can be involved with us really for six weeks for just a dollar. And if you're serious about trading, it's certainly worth checking out. Doesn't mean you have to continue with us, right? But Give it a chance, see if we're your fit. And if you are, you're welcome to continue. If you're not, well, at least you'll learn something in the meantime and you know, for very, very little investment. So I will see you guys next week. Um, until then, plan your trade, trade your plan. And I wish you guys the best of luck in this upcoming trading week. Take care and enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right, traders. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, please show us by hitting that like button and subscribing by clicking the button right below. If you're looking for more educational content, feel free to head over to our tradeempower.com website or also take a look and you'll see more videos available for you. Have a good one.